Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at the brand new animators forward slash triggers that now exist with Twinmotion 2020.2. And what we're going to do right now is just to go through this so that you guys can get a better understanding of how it works and also know how you can implement it in your own project. So very first thing which we're going to do is take a look at some of the samples that comes with it. So if you go over to tools, go over to animators, you would notice we have rotators and translators. So for the rotators, of course, this is for rotational objects, like for example, like the sliding door, press F to zoom right in. Yeah, for like the sliding door, something like that, or the rotating door, sorry. And you would also notice that we have the lifting barrier. So once you're within the proximity, it simply goes up and, you know, down, up, down up down so the question is how do you create yours so fortunately enough the guys from epic games twin motion they've also included the rotator you know tool that you can work with the same thing happens here they've also included the translator that you can also work with so let's get started with the rotator i'm going to simply create a brand new scene right here and for this we're going to initiate this rotator click bring this out press f on the keyboard to zoom right in for some reason the framing for this doesn't really work owing to the fact that this is just a trigger system and if i go all the way up and go over to object go to primitive and let's get ourselves a box so i'm just going to position this box where i think the pivot should be and it makes sense because you have to actually position the pivot depending on the kind of rotation you want so now once we have this here it is as simple as ever all you need to do is simply get the box drop the box within the rotator and you can now notice that we have rotation happening so once you have this rotation happening you can choose if you want this animation to be a ping pong animation if you want it to only happen once and stop or if you want it to continually loop now for this looping you can play with what angle you want so if you want it to loop to a point and stop you can do that if you want it to just you know loop backwards forward you can also choose to do that you can also choose to turn on play if you want it to play. If you want it not to, you can also do all of that stuff. Right now, you'd also notice that the trigger is turned off. So how we can work with the trigger is very simple. What we need to do is we need to just simply go right here and turn on the trigger. And you'll notice that once we do that, nothing happens. So in case you're working with this in your project and you have something like this, don't worry. All you need to do is go over to this section called more and then you can increase the trigger zone. So once you increase the trigger zone, once you step into that zone, the animation starts happening. So let's take a look at this with a character, or maybe we can use a car. So for this car, actually let's use a path to do that. So I'm going to go over to the context menu, grab a path, grab a character, and let's click, drag over to a point, click, and right click. So what we want to do is once this character generates and walks around this part, you would notice that the animation happens and once the character walks away from it you'd also notice that the animation automatically stops so you can play with the zone if you want the zone to be bigger if you want the zone to be smaller you can literally do this for your own you know project and for your own assets so with this one here uh are there other things that you can do yes so if you want this trigger to also happen based off certain things pedestrian we have that check camera you have that check vehicles bicycles if you want this to affect all of this you need to make sure you have all of this checked if you want it to affect only some specific parts you need to check only those parts so let's jump back and take a look at the speed if you also want the speed of the rotation to be you know a bit crazy you can play with that so let's take a look at a very very nice example so what we've done is we've gone over to the internet and we have downloaded a very nice helicopter so let me bring in the helicopter and since i would like to only work with the blades or the fan of the helicopter or the rotor of the helicopter what i would like to do now is instead of getting these by material i would want to get all of these by the hierarchy so once i do that and click on ok it's going to import the helicopter right in and we would have access to the entire file just how it was built in sketchup so right now if i click right over here you notice we have this as one object okay so we can grab this object and bring it all the way down going to the fact that we have a lot of hierarchies so let's close all of these groups drag this all the way down 
so let's bring that down over to a point like this so if we jump all the way back to the tools back to animators rotators click this rotational object and position it right here we can now get this to you know propel or you know get it to rotate the blades so let's also frame in and position this properly so one thing to keep in mind is you need to make sure that the pivot of your object is actually matching the place where you want it to be. Of course, you can use this to edit the pivot, which you can use to eyeball things. And at this point, I'm just going to position the main object about the point like so. So let's keep it there. Let's turn the time of day down so we can have visibility of what we're working on. So I'm going to turn that over to a point like that position this right about somewhere like there cool so with that done i will take this particular blade and all of the properties plug it into the rotator and you can notice that we have our blade rotating automatically all right so we have our blade rotating automatically but then what if we want this to rotate 360 before we do that let's make sure we have a very nice glass so i'm just gonna make a two-sided glass cool so how do we rotate this round if we set this all the way to 360 degrees you would notice that it does the 360 and you know it bounces back and bounces forward bounces back and bounces forward but if we go over to this section called animation we can change this to loop instead of ping pong so if we set this to loop you would notice that it starts rotating so it goes all the way to 360 starts from zero again all the way to 360 and so on once we click on more we can change how much delay time we want but since we don't want any of the delays we're just simply going to go ahead and play with the speed at this point you can have your blade rotating and then you can increase or play with the speed so if you want this to you know kind of simulate taking off you can have something like that go in there and yes of course you can still go in and play with the time of day you can animate this if this is something you want and at the same time if you would like to you know plug in some characters get some stuff happening yes you can do all of these things so once you have this you can connect this entire thing the whole rotator directly underneath where you have your main scene object so once you select the helicopter and move it around you would notice that this still applies so if you're thinking about animating this stuff you're thinking about creating some sort of movement you want to get some custom parts yes you can do all of this stuff so you can see like right here we already have a custom part and then you know simply save this to your user library and we have our animation going so at this point it is now totally up to you however you choose to style your scene yes you can do all of that stuff so now that we've looked at the rotator let's actually take a look at the translator so you can use these translators for a couple of things so for this one i would simply delete the custom parts real quick and then i would establish the fact that we have this going on so for the translators what we're going to do now is we will simply drag this translator right here and use something that is already pre-existing directly here in twin motion 2020.2 so if we go over to the vehicles and we go over to the aircraft we're going to take a look at one of the brand new aircraft that has actually been added here so this is the flying plane 05 so i will drag this one right over here simply position this where i want it to be and of course this is not like the best use case but we're going to go ahead and play with it either ways so if i click drag and drop directly under the translator you would notice that it has this very nice landing pattern so let's get a bit closer so this would be good for things like drones this would also be good for some other uh, models as well so if you also want this to happen based on triggers yes you can do that if you also want to increase the distance of course you can also proceed to do that so you can have the distance at which this is going to hover if you want the speed to be a bit more yes you can also have something like that so depending on what you want you can literally have all of these things working for you something else to also keep in mind is within the distance if you click on more you can change the axis so right now it's towards the z-axis we can change this to the y-axis so it's gonna you know fly through something like that let's position this about a point like there yep so it's gonna fly through about a point like that and of course if you would like this to happen based off a trigger you can also proceed to do that so we can turn on the trigger right here 
increase the trigger zone so let's go ahead and make that trigger zone of course the trigger zone seems to be a bit small let's position that about that point and if you would like this to happen based off a trigger yes you can simply get this ones happening uh, right there so this is totally up to you and how you want to get things going if you like this model to animate yes you can do that if you like this to perform you know uh, movement based off motions and all that stuff yes of course you can also go in there and get these things happening for yourself so this is definitely about it the rotators are here the translators are here so if you're thinking about creating some very nice looking animation of maybe something happening while the car runs through or maybe if you would like this uh, rotating copter to actually start rotation once a character gets very close to it then of course you can simply use things like triggers to get this one happening so this is definitely going to be about it i would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this Peace.